meteorologist Jeff Cox. I hope you enjoyed your Friday. It was kind of difficult with the weather that moved through the area. Soaking wet, to say the least, but tonight things are improving. Behind me, the latest satellite and radar, the clouds are continuing to thin out. Ignore this green on the map, that's clutter on the radar, nothing rain producing there. The widespread rain is gone, maybe a couple of sprinkles towards Telfair, Wheeler, and Montgomery counties, but that's all the rain lingering in central Georgia. So on to our temperature map, how about it? 60s right now, 62 in Macon, 66 in Warner Robins. 64 for Milledgeville and Dublin, near 70 right now in Eastman. Give it some time. There is cooler weather headed our way for tonight, especially north and west of Macon. Here's what we expect hour by hour for the rest of the night. After midnight, we'll start seeing the 50s come in, some upper 40s for first thing in the morning, and we're back in the upper 60s by lunchtime tomorrow. Overall, really nice weekend headed our way. We'll talk about that, plus some cooler weather inbound for central Georgia. The details you need, you'll have them in about 10 minutes. But the news starts right now. Now, news that works for you. This is WGXA News. Next on WGXA News at 11, an about face from Macon District Attorney David Cook means that an 83-year-old child kidnap suspect will be freed on bond. The release and stipulations for Christian Ogo. Plus, a Taylor County deputy draws down and fatally injures a machete-wielding suspect. What neighbors had to say about the now dead man. And today's rainstorms create havoc on Middle Georgia's roadways and thoroughfares. How one driver escaped serious injury as another wreck landed everyone else inside the car in jail. Well, good evening and thanks for watching WGXA News at 11. I'm Raymond Tubb. We have new developments tonight in the case of an 83 year old who is accused of trying to grab two children outside of Springdale Elementary School nine days ago. Christian Ogo, who recently moved to Macon from Nigeria, has been held without bond since his arrest. Macon District Attorney David Cook says that he's been working since the bond hearing to try to figure out what medical issues Ogo suffers from and how those issues could affect the case. After viewing the evidence, Cook asked, Obo, go, asked that Ogo be released. WGXA's Chase Ambrose has the details. Ogo was arrested at Springdale Elementary School on October 23rd, accused of attempted kidnapping, two counts of false imprisonment, and a single count of simple battery after allegedly grabbing a 13-year-old girl and later a young boy. Judge Howard Sims ordered a mental evaluation for Ogo before he would make a bond decision in the case. The NAACP stepped in, planning a news briefing to highlight the issue and their concerns. But minutes before that briefing took place, District Attorney David Cook had an about face, saying in an email statement that additional evidence about Ogo's medical condition has changed the state's opinion on the bond issue, and Cook would not object to Ogo's release but with a few stipulations. Namely, Ogo surrenders his passport and has no contact with victims or witnesses, stays at home in the care of an adult, and the accused stay away from all schools and daycare facilities. Because of his medical condition, Sheriff Davis had Ogo committed to the medical center prior to his release, a fact Ms. Westbrook says is much appreciated. They, they looked at a bigger picture and they, they made sure that you know, Mr. Ogo went in with medical conditions and if anyone have, would have seen the him on TV, you would have saw that there was something evidently you know not quite right. Uh, I'm so thankful that they were able to to see the bigger picture and make sure that he got the necessary proper and proper medical attention that he that he needed. The case has also gotten the attention of the Middle Georgia Prison Parole and Reentry Task Force. We are very concerned about this case, this particular case, because this is such an egregious um, egregious. Um, misconduct as far as I'm concerned, you know, on the part of those who charged him with these crimes. Obviously, this man has a medical condition. Mr. Ogo's son wouldn't comment on the case, but told me off camera his father was hospitalized for dehydration. A hospital release date has not been set. Chase Ambrose, WGXA. Currently, the charges are still pending for Ogo, but District Attorney Cook says that his office is reevaluating whether or not to go forward with prosecuting the case. Ogo's family has called the situation a case of culture shock for the recently relocated senior. Well, attorneys for the wheelchair-bound Macon man accused of murder say that they hope to move him into a Veterans Affairs home soon. 73-year-old Frank Reeves made a short court appearance today, although his scheduled bond hearing was postponed until a later date. Reeves' attorney says that he wants to negotiate the terms of his bond and show the court that the VA has a secure place where he can stay until his trial. 
Reeves is accused of shooting 65 year old Linda Honeycutt of Jones County at a Gray Highway gas station back in December of last year. The GBI is investigating a deadly officer related shooting last night in Taylor County. Deputies say that it happened around 5 o'clock in the 400 block of Old Wire Road just outside of Butler. The victim, Johnny Wayne Howell, was shot and killed after reportedly attacking a sheriff's deputy with a machete. Witnesses say that despite officers using a taser on Howell, he knocked an officer over and had the machete raised when officers fired multiple shots at Howell, killing him. A lifelong friend of the victim tells WGXA that Howell had a history of drinking, seizures, and mental instability. That same friend says that Howell was taken to the hospital earlier Thursday but refused treatment and was released. There's no word on if any of the involved officers are still at work. A grocery store owner in Irvington is hit with a 40 month long prison sentence for his part in a multi million dollar food stamp scam in Wilkinson County. A judge sentenced Alfred Boyd to four years, four months in prison. He also has to pay back $800,000 in fines. The feds say that the six month investigation of the 2010 crime is one of the biggest food stamp fraud cases in Georgia history. Boyd is accused of pocketing between 30 and 45 percent of the money. Lawyers and legal advocates in middle Georgia are raising money and awareness to help the poor get access to legal help. WGXA's Shawnee Tager shows you how they party tonight to make that happen. Sue and the Bastards, a band of lawyers, plans to rock the house for better legal services. Making attorney Nancy Terrell says it's all part of the second annual Georgia Legal Services fundraiser to help create more access to legal services for poor people in middle Georgia. People stayed all night for all the bands and danced and uh, we were real excited and decided to, to do it again this year. Concert and ceremony to honor Macon attorney Cubbage Snow begins tonight. Money from sponsors and ticket sales will go to the Macon office of the Georgia Legal Services, a group of lawyers that help poor people with civil cases in 23 middle Georgia counties. Unless um, people have access to a lawyer, then often there is no access to justice. Terrell says legal services have been hurt by recent federal budget cuts and sequestration. The group raised around $20,000 last year, but are hoping to do even better this year and help reach more people. Our goal is $30,000. We would love to make that, but what we really hope is that a lot of people will come out, have a good time, and support a wonderful office. Shanti Tager, WGXA. Child care leaders from around the state gathered in Milledgeville to push for more participation in Georgia's first quality rated system. Visitors got a closer look at St. Stephen's Day School this morning. They heard about more about the rated program, which is geared to help improve and communicate the quality level in child care programs. According to researchers, most learning for a child happens between birth and age five. However, teachers are aware that learning is just as important at home. We do believe parents are their first teachers, but we are there to enhance. And the quality rated program has given us all the um, Incentives to move further. Quality Rated uses one, two, and three stars to show you which early care and education programs meet a set of standards that exceeds the state's minimum licensing requirements. Programs earn a high number of stars by having more highly trained staff. Well, although today was a dreary Friday, the embellished wedding brought style and personal service through the rain in downtown Macon. The new shop held a grand opening and ribbon cutting this afternoon on Cotton Avenue. It's a specialty boutique that carries everything from wedding related. Owner Felicia Rouse says that, she, that everything that you need. She's targeting brides planning to marry next year so she can help with anything and everything for their special day. Once the bride has chosen her dress, then they're able to come here and get a personal assistant to help them choose the perfect headpiece, perfect jewelry, and other accessories for the wedding. Anything from headpieces to the ring bearer's pillow can be found at the embellished wedding on Cotton Avenue. You can stop by any time on Wednesday through Friday from 11 to 5 and on Saturdays from 11 to 4. Well, later on WGXA News at 11, the demand is increasing for skilled workers in middle Georgia. How schools are trying to help fill those jobs. And today's rainstorm creates havoc on Middle Georgia's highways and thoroughfares. 
Yeah, certainly a slick day on area roadways. And I saw a lot of folks not running their headlights while it was raining. Always remember that. The good news is rain getting... Well, today's rainfall made for a busy day for police officers as well as tow truck, tow truck drivers. Numerous wrecks and hydroplaning accidents were reported all across middle Georgia today. One led to a temporary shutdown of I-75 near Forsyth. One accident that we rolled up on today was one on Hawkinsville Road. The driver was traveling toward Warner Robins when she hit a pole and rolled her car several times. Bib Sheriff's deputies say that since she was wearing her seatbelt, the driver was uninjured. Well, one wreck in Forsyth earlier today led to all four passengers getting a complimentary trip to the Monroe County Jail. A sheriff's news release says that the four people were arrested and charged with possession of marijuana after the vehicle that they occupied left the scene of an accident. They're identified as 17-year-old Nevada Mabry, 23-year-old Michael Williams. Also arrested and charged were 18-year-old Keshawn Taylor and 25-year-old Martrez Womack. All are from Chicago. Deputies say that the car that the suspects were in rear-ended another vehicle and then failed to stop at the scene of the accident. They were pursued and stopped by the Monroe County deputy who smelled a strong odor of marijuana, which was found inside the car. Mabry is also charged with leaving the scene of an accident, and Williams is charged with misdemeanor obstruction. After a soaking wet day, we are high and dry tonight across central Georgia. All the rain getting out of here, and behind it will be clearing weather for the weekend. Cold front sitting right across central Georgia. Sorry, fun intended, my friends. It's Friday night. Here we are, a live look over central Georgia, and the roads are dry, <laughs> and the uh, rain will eventually go to an end. Uh, the studio folks are getting a kick out of that one tonight. All right, it's 63 in downtown with a dew point of 63, a west wind at 6. A lot of rain today. The only thing limiting fog development tonight is if we can get rid of this wind. It uh, creates enough friction that will keep things stirred up. You guys, they're laughing tonight. Friday night, it's a busy one here at the station. Uh, and if we can get rid of this wind, uh, it will uh, really limit the fog development. So that's one thing we'll watch for overnight. But as this front continues to move on through, it'll eventually clear things out. And so we're looking at a sun-filled weekend. Here's the latest radar. We've got a couple of showers down towards Wheeler and Montgomery County, towards Vidalia. That'll eventually get out of here. Until then, the bigger story would be the potential for fog. But the front sits right about here. So if we can get rid of that front tonight, which we will, eventually things will improve and we'll get a lot of sunshine for the weekend. Watch this persistent southwest to northeast flow. So the front overall is making that eastward progress, but all the rain ahead of it is southwest to northeast. And so we had a a lot of rain over the same areas, and as a result, the rainfall totals piled up nicely. We've been sampling rainfall total data all day. The radar actually can estimate how much rain has fallen across the area. Here's some sample totals for you. In South Lawrence County, we've got 1.3 estimated there. South Wilkinson County, 1.4. Up into Jones County near Gray, 1.3. And in parts of Crawford County, over an inch this afternoon as well. Now, we have several rain gauges that we monitor region wide, and here's the exact totals we've been able to find Perry 1.39 big winner there Sandersville inch and a quarter near that for Byron and Macon and also 1.18 in Warner Robins notice a lot of folks over an inch in Cordill Fort Valley near an inch for Sparta and Jeffersonville so good rain we needed the rain and certainly it's going to help us in the short term we finished October two inches behind average first look ahead the front will be pushing on through during the overnight hours we'll look for some sunshine throughout the day tomorrow looks like a really nice Saturday I think Sunday will be a nicer day but that's going to be a very fall-like day with that cooler weather spilling in, and we're talking 60s for Sunday and into early next week. So here's a look at your forecast as we see things right now. Here in Macon and Bibb County, we'll call it a trend of fading clouds, the rain ending, and it is going to turn much cooler, upper 40s for overnight lows. And by tomorrow, we're looking at mid-70s, a nice and mild day with just a few clouds, a little breezy northwest 5 to 15. Seven-day forecast showing 60s for Sunday and into early next week. By Monday morning, overnight lows in the upper 30s. It's so a little chill in the air. Next chance of rain Thursday of next week. Fishing game forecast, a great one for you here going into the weekend. Saturday, peaks near the excellent range at 1.20 a.m., around 6 or 7 a.m., and at 1.40, 
tomorrow afternoon. So a great fishing game forecast, yeah. great weather to go along with that for the weekend. The only other thing you need to know besides sunshine for the weekend, roll those clocks back an hour Saturday night. Time for the time change. A lot of hunters going to be in the woods tomorrow, I can tell I you. I guarantee that. As clouds moving out, yeah. it's going to be good weather. Well, more news is on the way, but first, here's a look at what's coming on later on tonight on Nightline. Hello and thanks. Later tonight on Nightline, a shooter at LAX kills a TSA officer and injures more. The panic at the airport and the 23-year-old accused of being behind it all. Plus, we're going in search of the hottest pepper ever. That's on Nightline. Back to you. The Fed slapped Robbins Air Force Base with a safety violation for not doing enough to protect contract workers from possible exposure to chromium. Base officials say that they got the violation late last night from OSHA, that's the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It cites Robbins for not developing more stringent engineering controls to protect contract employees who perform hand sanding work on C 17s. The notice resulted from an inspection by OSHA during a two day period in early May. Well, soon Warner Robins voters will decide who will be their next mayor. As a matter of fact, next Tuesday. So we sat down with the candidates for a brief question and answer series. And here with the final segment of his three part series is WGXA's Chase Ambrose. For the third and final question in our series with the Warner Robins mayoral candidates, I asked a question that's very simple and obvious, but also very important. Why are you running for mayor of Warner Robins? Uh, Warner Robins is important to me. The future of Warner Robins is important to me because of my the next generation and the next generations. I think the city employees have been somewhat overlooked um, and neglected in that there's been too much stuff going on and we need to settle down and we need to give the city employees what they need in order to do their job. I'm running for mayor because I have a big concern for the people of Warner Robins. I have a love for the city. I have 21 years of service to the city. 19 of those years I was Public Works Director. I've been in upper management in the city. I've been involved in the projects of the city. For 13 years, I've prepared myself uh, to be the mayor. Uh, when I returned from California, uh, working in the community, I, I saw the needs. I, I heard the cry of the community and also listening to my grandmother, uh, Ms. Ada Lee, who has been a strong pioneer in community leadership. Well, I think the next four years is going to be absolutely critical to Warner Robins, uh, Middle Georgia, and to Robins Air Force Base. And I think as we look forward to these next four years, we need a leader that has got the business experience and the experience of working with the aerospace and defense community. Well, it's a continuation of my life of service. I enlisted in the Air Force 27 years ago next month. And uh, I became an officer. I, I worked with the Air Force. I'm a civil servant now. I'm, it's just something I want to continue to do in public service and serving the citizens of Warner Robins as well as serving the uh, employees in the city. Well, at this point in my life with my uh, work experience and my life experience and knowledge and credentials, uh, I thought that I could make a real contribution to the citizens and taxpayers of Warner Robins. Chase Ambrose, WGXA. Times have been tough for Georgia's construction businesses ever since the economy downturn in 2008. But that isn't the case anymore. Demand is increasing for skilled workers, but finding people seems to be the problem now. WGXA's Kristen Drummond reports the construction companies are once again trying to attract middle Georgia students to get into their field. From power tools <laughs> to laying brick and even soft soldering, construction companies bring out their equipment to give middle Georgia high school students a hands-on experience. Bring more skilled labor in, I mean, because it's really been a hard thing. It's, it's tooth and nail to try to find somebody qualified. Stafford Lisenbach is a mechanical contractor in Macon. He, along with others, participated in the first Careers in Construction Expo at Central Georgia Technical College. The goal, try to persuade students to consider a career in their field. We've been experiencing a severe work shortage uh, for our construction trades. Event organizer Tony Baramo says he's seen more activity in the last six months than he's seen since 2008 in Georgia. 
After the economy turned, residential construction slowed, as did commercial development. Now, Verano says demand is back, and a workforce is needed ASAP. But there's a problem. A lot of them uh, really don't want to go into the trades anymore, so we're just trying to grow that and show them that there's a, a real uh, career in construction. And after visiting some booths, one student says he's thinking twice about career choices. I thought about going for animation, college for animation. I feel like I might have something going for me in construction, whether it be electrical or plumbing. Lisenbach hopes that talk of jobs will attract students, all in an effort to grow his field. Get them a little more excited about it so that they follow it through into college, then more educated work field. Kristen Drummond, WGXA. This isn't the first expo trying to attract high school students into a life of construction. Bramos says that the event's also been held in Albany and Valdosta. Well, coming up after the break, the Dublin Courier Herald celebrates its 100th year as a daily newspaper. We'll show you how when we return. I guess who's 100 years young and going strong? The Dublin Courier Herald celebrated its 100th year as a daily newspaper. Executive editor Dubose Porter says that the Lawrence County paper has been around even longer for 35 years. Before then, it was weekly. Porter says that it's been challenging covering the changing face of news in Middle Georgia for the past century. But a newspaper has been the chronicle of the day-to-day -day events of this community daily for 100 years, before that weekly for, a, for 135 years. And in honor of that birthday today, Porter and his staff gave the public a tour of the paper's facilities there. That's an old newspaper. That is. 100 years, still going strong. It's good stuff there. Uh, soaking wet today, and we warned folks that it would be nasty on area football fields. It was yes. a big night of high school football in Central Georgia, but we had the the game of all games tonight. That's and right. An interesting outcome. It was a very interesting outcome. A big upset that's going to be felt around the state. Yes. The Warner Robins Demons and Northside Eagles played each other tonight, and it was Warner Robins the Demons Woo. pulling the upset, 28 to 18, over previously number one and undefeated Northside. Uh, of course, uh, you know, Northside still got the playoffs up ahead, yes. and I've yeah. got a feeling that this might give them something to focus on in practice. And I suspect they'll be hoping for dry weather next week. <laughs> Looks like Maybe turnovers so. were an issue tonight, so yeah. uh, Warner Robins comes out. Weather plays a part, yeah. possibly. Let's see what's coming up real quickly in a few minutes on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Thanks. Tonight we have music from Corn and the cast of Modern Family is here. Everybody smile. If you want to call, you want to call somebody, just let me Stars, know. Stars, they really are just look, like us. Look at them. Oh, my God. Look at this. hilarious. All no right. texting while talking. There you <laughs> Hey, uh, sunny for the weekend. Get out there and enjoy it. Time change Saturday night. Don't forget. Yeah. So it's those hot. Yeah. Back an hour. Well, thanks for watching us tonight. Stay tuned for Jimmy Kimmel Live. And uh, latest headlines and forecasts always online at WGXA.TV. We'll see you back Monday morning beginning at 530. Have a great weekend. Have a good weekend.